would be my question to you. Do you believe that President Trump's rhetoric is responsible for uh, somebody sending bombs in the mail? No, I think President Trump's rhetoric is responsible for poisoning our political discourse. Anybody who, who hears that poison and, and takes it on themselves to commit an act of violence, they're responsible for that. But he is responsible for doing things that I never thought I would see, and I don't think you ever thought you would see a president do. A president calling the other so, party let me ask you, evil. let me ask you, so that, that's, that's a, a two-part question. Calling them, wait, wait, calling them arsonists. That's something very serious that is dangerous to our democracy. I fear for my country that I love. This, this is I a two-part question, so I, I agree with president. you. I don't, I don't blame a politician's rhetoric for the actions of someone else. You said it very, you said it very articulately at the beginning. People who commit heinous, evil acts, they are responsible for their acts and their crimes themselves. I agree with that. If the president is not responsible for uh, for these bombs being sent in the mail, but you said he poisons our discourse. Do you apply that same standard when Senator Bernie Sanders is asked about Antifa, the Antifa mobs in Portland, Oregon, harassing white drivers for being white, you know, just being general thugs? When he was asked to condemn that, he said, well, we need to mobilize people. He declined to condemn that. Or when Democratic Senator from Hawaii, Maisie Hirono, was asked, is it too far to chase Republican Trump administration officials or Republican Congress people out of restaurants? And she refused to say that's too far. Do you apply the same standard and say that that type of implicit encouragement also poisons our political environment? I would apply the same standard to all sides. There is a difference between saying, go punch somebody in the face and then maybe not uh, full-throatedly uh, criticizing other people for uh, approaching people in restaurants. I don't think those are, are the same, and I certainly don't think the same when, it, when it's the president of the United States doing it. So no, those are not the same kinds of actions. Uh, but we've seen, I would we've argue seen that the president is the leader. Violence. The, the president we've seen is actual the violence from the left in the past two months. We've seen Republican candidates assaulted in Minnesota and in Nevada. We've seen Antifa mobs harassing conservatives. And it's a very, we've seen death threats sent to Justice Brett Kavanaugh and his family. We've seen actual violence from the left at a much higher rate than we've ever seen violence from no. the right since the Trump administration came, came into uh, office here. The stuff that's happened in the past two months, where, ha where has Democrat, where is Democratic condemnation of those types of acts? And how is that different than uh, what you would deem, I guess, implicit encouragement? You're factually incorrect here. The violence coming from the right is far, far worse since President Trump has come into office or has come on the scene. Going back to 2016, when people, uh, when there were two men in Boston who beat up uh, uh, a Latino man or a Latino looking man and said, yeah, Trump was right. We should get rid of these illegal immigrants. And they beat him up. OK, that was and they mentioned Ian, that they were motivated point, by Trump. Though. And they're the, all the violent things that right? I just no, no, listed. No, no. Democrats just shrug them off because it's conservatives who are the target. You yeah. didn't even stop to say those are horrible things. And the Democratic leadership ought to condemn them so that it doesn't become normal. That's what Democrats do. They just pivot and say, well, Trump did it, too. 